So let's come to the last category of surnames, patronymic surnames, those deriving mainly from the first name of the father. Uh, in Germanic languages, uh, we use usually patronymic suffixes, and patronymic suffixes, here you have them. Uh, these are the main ones, um, a single S uh, denoting the genitive, uh, so facts. Um, then sen, son, uh, all deriving from son, okay, son of. Then you have a zero suffix, which means just the first name of the father. And you have the very ancient ing, or in, which denotes people of, okay. And uh, here you go. So uh, there is Peter's, which is the first, so Peter's son. Then you have Peterson, then you have Peterson, pronounced the same in English. Then you have simply Peter as a last name, and something like Ewing, you know, the people of you. Um, the difference between S-O-N and S-E-N uh, is uh, they used to be pronounced differently. So Peterson and Peterson or something like that. Um, whereas the first one, Peterson, is a weakening of the son. It's the same thing. It's just second syllable, third syllable uh, syllables in Germanic languages, usually unstressed and therefore weakened. And so son becomes sen. And it's the same in German and in all other Germanic languages. Okay, so these are the patronymic suffixes in um, Germanic, more or less, because um, all of them exist in German as well, as a matter of fact. Particularly the ing um, is very productive in German for place names. You have the people of who founded a village or something. You still have it in Reading, for example, the people of Reed, uh, who founded probably this sort of hamlet, which it was in medieval times. Okay, um, um, of course, uh, Celtic, uh, loads of uh, Celtic uh, surnames um, in England today, and of course, Mac, uh, the most productive of them all, which is the Scottish son of, and strictly speaking, a patronymic prefix, okay, because you pen it to uh, the beginning of a name, MacDonald, uh, McCartney, and so on, MacGyver. You know them all. And uh, the more Irish O, uh, which denotes something like the descendants of, not very particularly uh, the sons, but yes. Um, I need not give you uh, more examples than that. You can come up with hundreds of them. Yeah, O'Neill, O'Toole, and so on. Uh, there is a, another one, another variety, that is Norman, which people keep on forgetting. A Norman prefix, patronymic prefix. It's the Fitz, uh, which ultimately derives from Latin filius. Okay, Fitz, as in Fitzgerald, the son of Gerald. Fitzwilliam, the son of William. Fitzpatrick, Fitzherbert, Fitzhugh, and so on. I still have loads of those. Um, particularly, of course, coupled with um, Christian names, which were prevalent in Anglo-Norman. Uh, Gerald is a very important one. William is, the third one is Richard. Um, of course, these, um, Thomas, yes, um, uh, Geoffrey, and a few others. Uh, so these Norman names, which then um, were, of course, uh, turned into last names by adding Fitz as Felius. Uh, there are other ones uh, which are not as prevalent in English today, which I will leave out for the time being. Okay, um, and most of them are very, very um, transparent, but some of them probably need some explanation here. Well, a few examples. Watson, for example, because it's so very, very frequent. Uh, what being a, uh, a something like a, a nickname for Walter, uh, Walter Watt. We know Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth the, the first. Uh, uh, she called uh, Sir Walter Raleigh um, Watt. Okay, Watt. That was much very common you know, for Walter. So Watson is the son of Walter. Okay, uh, Watts as well, of course, and others. 
Uh, uh, the next one is uh, very interesting, Jenkins, because this first name doesn't exist anymore. Jenkin, yeah, Jenkin, um, a very common name in medieval times. Jenkin, little John. You have it, for example, in Chaucer's Wife of Bath prologue, where one of the protagonists is Janikin. However, Chaucer pronounced him Janikin, probably something like this, uh, deriving uh, from the diminutive kin, uh, tinken, which is still very productive in German and Dutch, yeah, mannequin, mannequin piss in Brussels, for example, as a diminutive uh, means little one. And in some English dialects, it existed. And here in Jenkin, you still have it preserved, ossified in the last name Jenkins. And since the name is comparatively frequent, uh, the name Jenkin must have been um, omnipresent, probably in, in the north of England, yes. Um, not, another one, Harris or Harrison or Harrison, um, whatever, um, in all varieties, um, which is, uh, yes, uh, the familiar address for Henry. Well, that's Henry V, uh, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, and so on, in the famous speech at Agincourt. Um, Harry, yeah, for Henry, oh, the current prince, Henry, Prince Harry, uh, they um, switch. Okay, so Harris, yeah, Harrison, um, for Henry. I don't know whether Henryson exists. I don't know. Never heard it. Um, or the next one, uh, um, Dix, Dixon, Dixon, with an X or with CK and then even Dickinson and so on with Dick. Uh, being the familiar address for Richard, uh, Dick, Richard. So, and uh, which gives you all these varieties, Dick. Yeah, this is the son of Richard. Um, the next one, Hendrix. Yeah, Hendrix. Um, uh, uh, usually spelled with an X, but uh, could be spelled with a C K S as well. Um, very common name in German but also in English. Uh, the name is Hendrik. Uh, I don't know whether it still exists in English. I've never heard it. In German it does. Yeah? German and Dutch. Um, Hendrix, uh, I just included because of Jimi Hendrix. Uh, some of this. Yes, it's a patronymic. Yeah? Hendrik and Hendrix. Spelled with an X. Never mind. But yes. Okay. Uh, Sanders, for example. Oh, another one. Sanders. It is short for Alexanders. And uh, uh, since Alexander's, the, the main stress being on the third syllable, Sanders, uh, Alex Sanders, here you go, we're clipping. Uh, Alex Sanders becoming, uh, Alexander becoming Al Sander, and then Sander, um, patronymic Sanders. Okay, yeah. Oh, we have loads of others. Thompson, for example. Yeah? Thompson, spelled with a P. Uh, it's Thompson. Uh, the P is unetymological. Um, it's there because uh, it's one of these sounds which occur if you speak sloppily. Thompson, Thompson, Thompson. Yeah? If you don't open your lips fast enough when they explode, a p inadvertently appears. And at, at, at times they start writing it. Well, another example of this type would be, for example, would be empty. Yeah? Empty. The p. Same thing. Empty. No. Empty in Old English. Yeah? The p. Uh, it's never been there. Uh, okay, uh, um, these are uh, patronyms, which uh, probably uh, need some explanation. Um, the question being, of course, um, this overabundance of patronymic surnames in Germanic languages, well, not only in Germanic languages, I mean, you have similar things in, 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 in Slavonic languages, for example, yeah, of and ova or um, I don't know, which in Croatian, uh, Serbian, and so on. Slavonic languages have that too, and uh, yes, many other languages. Is it a very Indo-European thing? Well, probably there are some scholars who say that the Indo-Europeans were uh, particularly patriarchal, patriarchal societies. So which goes then back to uh, very ancient times. Some like six, seven thousand years ago, 
But imagine, yes, um, um, one indication could be in um, all um, Indo-European religions, polytheistic religions, you have a godfather. Godfather! Father! Not godmother. Could be. Uh, why not? No, it's a godfather. So is it that uh, the Indo-Europeans and then their descendants, the Germanic people, or Slavonic and so on, were they very, very patriarchal? Probably were. Uh, probably were. And, and, and one indication could, could be that um, the name of the father okay, was very, very important for your identity. And it's true. Um, if you regard old epics, uh, like, um, well, take Beowulf, uh, Beowulf. Why is he helping Hrothgar? Because Hrothgar helped his father and he's indebted to it. I mean, as a son, you are, in a way, your father is the most important figure, bloodline, from the father's side, not the mother's. Is that one indication, uh, uh, those patronymics, um, it could be. Fact is, they are everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. In Germanic languages and produced a lot of um, last names and uh, sometimes it may be interesting to in a way uh, excavate those old names uh, which are behind them which we try to do okay uh, this is that um, uh, this was my very very short and certainly superficial um, presentation of the origin of uh, names, um, uh, last names, family names. Uh, once again, I uh, kind of repeat myself more often. It's not, all, all everything I, I just said is not very particular to English. It's Germanic. And uh, probably a last word, uh, the only country where it is still productive is Iceland. Huh? In Iceland, it's still productive. So it's your, if your father is Gunnar, you are Gunnar's son up to the present day. And even more so, if you are a woman and your father is Gunnar, you are Gunnar Dottir, which is, of course, daughter. In all other countries, yeah, like Norway or Denmark and uh, Germany and Netherlands and so on, I mean, uh, those names um, um, have been ossified at one time or the other. Okay, they stopped, they stopped being productive and then those names were just traded on. Well, not so in Iceland. Not so in Iceland with the uh, patronymics. Okay, so uh, let's stop here and um, we'll take it from here sooner or later.